Joining us today is Steve Epson, who is a horticulture consultant at the Noble Foundation in Ardmore. And Steve, we're here at Rejoice Farms yeah. looking at some of their strawberries. It's berry season, right? It is. And, and the strawberries have kind of cycled through Oklahoma's history a little bit. Can you tell us about that? Around the turn of the century, most of the berries were grown in Arkansas. This was before statehood. And so there became, there, there really was a hot spot of production in Northwest Arkansas. Um, and then eventually all that production moved into Oklahoma territory or to the state of Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And uh, as the population grew, as Oklahoma grew, more berries were produced. Now at the time, uh, most of the berries that were grown were either consumed on the farm or sold locally. Okay. Production kept increasing uh, from around the turn of the century up to around 1930, according to the statistics I've looked at. And at that time, um, there were approximately 4,000 acres of strawberries grown in Oklahoma. And that's wow. just hard for us to you know, wrap your, you, you know, our, our minds around. It's a lot of berries. And those were grown on almost as, as many farms. I mean, I think around 3,900 uh, farms. Uh -huh. So the average farm size for berries was a little over an acre. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a lot of picking. That's a lot of berries. Right. But then things started to change. Uh, several reasons for that. Production started to drop off. Demographics changed. Uh, California became a major producer. Mm -hmm. They had favorable climate, a lot of labor. And transportation got better. <laughs> transportation better. You know, after the Second World War, we had the interstate system. Mm -hmm. And so you could deliver berries from California all the way to the central part of the United States, you know, kind of overnight. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that was, that had a competitive advantage. That, and so production kept dropping. And, uh, you know, by the 70s, you know, there's hardly anything in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. There were a few small plots. And of course, people grew them in their backyards. But then over the last 10, 15 years, maybe 20, uh, we've seen an uptick in that. And that is a result of people wanting local food. It's, it's interesting how things cycle. Yeah. Uh, so, um, eating properly, food security, that's right. a big thing, you know. So all these factors kind of came into play uh, to, to uh, create this demand. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing more of these types of uh, small local uh, production units going into, uh, in, in to, coming into to play here. And what's great about this is mm -hmm. you can actually speak to the farmer usually about how your berries have been treated, if yes. you have questions about that. And mm -hmm. in some cases they're you pick. So you can't mm -hmm. get any fresher than that. Right, yeah, and we, we've got berries that are grown traditionally with uh, synthetic fertilizers and, and uh, pesticides, and then we have those that uh, use a combination of organic and uh, traditional, and then truly organic, mm -hmm. you know, and you're gonna pay a little more for the organic. It takes a little bit more skill to grow things, you know, organically. Uh, fortunately, we have more uh, products available now than we did even 10 years ago for the organic user, uh, organic grower to use that uh, can make, um, you know, production uh, less risky. And so the farms that we're talking about, this is not just backyard gardening. This mm -hmm. is for growing for farmers markets or you pick sort of agritourism type right. uh, farms. What would you say the average size of those are? Are they still around one acre or? Uh, maybe less. Yeah, okay. it's kind of like this. You know, I, 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 an acre to two would be really big in Oklahoma. Typically, the backyard production is going to be more traditional, matted row. This is plastic culture. Mm -hmm. Very, um, very intensive, um, a little more expensive, but the upside is that you have cleaner berries. You have a little more production uh, compared to the old uh, uh, matted row system. And, and what about our Oklahoma climate? I mean, mm. is there a certain area that's better suited for strawberry production? Would you say central to eastern Oklahoma or? Well, how far no, west it, can we go? <laughs> okay, I mean, if you're going to use, if you want to employ technology, you can go as far west as you want. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you give them a little protection, mm -hmm. they'll do fine anywhere. Uh, we find that that plants that are grown on these beds covered with plastic have less incidence of disease, of weeds, and they're a little easier to harvest. And of course, you can also grow them inside a greenhouse, which is kind of overkill. Uh, many people are, are doing tunnels or high tunnels or we call hoop houses in Oklahoma. They're just a, a non-heated greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And that will, that will send them to another level also in production. Uh, if people want to grow in a hoop house, grow strawberries in a hoop house, today I would advise them, recommend that they grow in a container where they can move that okay. in or out of the tunnel. 
or have a movable tunnel. Because that's expensive real estate. It's very, right. very expensive real estate, yeah. <laughs> so if, if somebody is interested in growing for markets mm -hmm. specifically, um, where, could they contact the Noble Foundation for more information? You bet. All yeah. right. And their, your website would be the best way to get the information. You bet. That would be. I'd be more than happy to talk with anybody on that uh, from, on a commercial scale basis. Yeah. Excellent. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.